We have spoken about practical solutions to issues that deal with the crises that are being faced by the world. It should be noted that most of that with which we have dealt to this point are issues related to energy and the production of energy. Of course, there are issues concerning the crisis that the Earth faces, specifically that of global warming, that can be dealt with in ways other than the issues of energy production. And they are important, and we will get to those in the very near future. But first, let's speak about energy production in a way in which it has not been approached. For all of that which we have approached to this point, even that which has been outside of the box thinking, so to speak, has been as far as we are concerned, relatively conventional. Now let's speak a little about unconventional modalities of energy. Very specifically, those things that might be called mega energy, for they're already produced in large quantities, or they are already available to be tapped, or they are methods of storing that are already available for large-scale energy. No. First, think about the Earth itself. It is a ball spinning through the atmosphere, and the atmosphere itself is also spinning, even though the Earth within that atmosphere is spinning at a different ratio to some extent. Think of it as a ball of chocolate in pudding, and you're spinning the bowl, but the ball is loose within that pudding, so it is also spinning at a slightly different rate. So what you have is a frictional element that constantly generates electric. Ever notice when you look at a simple ceiling fan, or for that matter, a fan on a stand, and you let them run for a prolonged period, when you look at them, have you ever noticed? There tends to be a buildup of dust on them. You say, they're moving, why would dust build up on them? Because the blades are moving through the air. They are creating static electricity. Now, you think static electricity is something minor, but static electricity is a very powerful and viable energy source. If you were to look at what would ignite something because of its temperature, static electricity is high on that list light a match, you have one temperature. Ignite a lighter, you have several hundred degrees. Create static electricity and you're jumping to a thousand, twelve hundred degrees. Static electricity is hot. That means that it is a very viable form if you can learn to control it. Now, it is no secret that 
some geniuses in the past, including Tesla, have looked at this and have thought that it would be a form of electricity that could be tapped because the Earth in its rotation and the atmosphere in its constant movement, even in the outer edges of it, is constantly building static electricity. If you can find a way to tap that, utilizing a wave upon which that energy can be sent, Think about this now, because now you're thinking outside of the box. How can you transport energy? Can you transport energy on microwaves? Can you transport energy in a way other than running it through a line? The obvious answer is yes, but you must learn. This is where your science you must learn. This is where your science is still in its infancy in many respects regarding electricity. For you do not yet have a full comprehension even of light and the various idea of particles versus waves and how these interrelate. So how would you know how these interrelate with electric? And yet they do. Which means that you have a continual renewing source of electricity just via the rotation of the Earth. Now that is not the only thing that is going on. For remember, the core of the earth is a huge iron ball. And that iron produces a magnetic field as it is spinning in the compressed heat of the earth itself. Therefore, you have another form of energy, a magnetic energy, that radiates from the earth. In fact, it is this very magnetic energy that protects you from the radiation that is constantly bombarding your planet from outer space. And this allows you to have life as you know it. But this is also something that has been used in the ancient past to provide a source of energy of which you are now seemingly totally unaware. For you can ground from the earth and pull from that energy and actually bring those magnetic fields up and use those to transmit energy. Now, that is something that science has not yet achieved in the recent history of the Earth. And it should be said that right at the moment, this will be considered a fringe thought, but it is a place where research should be focused. Oh, you focus on the other big forms of energy that the Earth provides. You focus on thermal energy that comes out of the Earth. You focus on gas vents that come out of the Earth. Why not tap the consistent energy that comes out of the Earth as well. For the Earth itself does provide energy. Now, this can be used in various ways. For the magnetic fields can be used as a form of energy, or they can be used to transport or energy or communication from tower to tower or antenna to antenna, which brings up 
another issue, the storage of energy. And again, this is one that has been researched, even researched relatively recently, but has not been exploited in any true way to benefit humanity in recent history. That is the storage of energy in crystalline structures which already exist naturally in caves or underground in the earth. And the crystalline structures can vary in range from such things as quartz or amethyst or even salt. Various crystal structures can store energies and by the means of capping the energies from the atmosphere, you can bring that down and store that in the crystals, i.e. a cavern, a cave, a underground storage unit that is provided naturally or man-made. And your question now becomes, how do you tap that energy to drain it off? You tap that energy to drain it off just as you would tap any other energy. They basically serve a function very similar to the common capacitor. All you have to do is learn to take this off in a measured way rather than to simply pull it off in one instantaneous release. These ideas, these scientific researches for the future will seem to many far-fetched, more or less like science fiction. We assure you they are not, although you will be very fortunate if you can achieve the minor exploitation of these within this century, because this takes technology that you have not yet managed to create or manufacture, but you have the potential. You're on the verge. What you lack, what you lack is the desire, the funding, the actual vision. For if you do not have vision of a possibility, you will not achieve. Where there is no vision, there is only stagnation. And where there is stagnation, there is death. Life is vision, forward-looking vision. And this is what you need to exploit that which the earth provides so humanity can live in a more harmonious and balanced way within the world that is provided. If you fail to do this, eventually you will do as you have done before. You say, oh, before, yes, previous races have been just as advanced as you are and they have failed just as it looks like you can fail in the future if you do not stop making the mucky mess that you're making out of your world. It is truly that simple. You say, oh, but we don't have evidence. Well, you have only a few thousand years of evidence because bones eventually disappear into the earth 
cities eventually disappeared. There are whole cities in this world right now buried in jungles that you have yet to even find. If you can't find that which is obvious, how do you expect to find an animal or a person that is gone and has been gone for thousands if not millions of years? Yes, humanity has failed, and humanity has failed. So now you come to your current stage of humanity, your species, the Homo sapien. Well, if you don't have vision, you'll run the same course as previous humanity has. Vision. Vision is what creates the survival of humanity. And the soul, the soul is measured in eternity. So what think you if a race is measured in mere millions or thousands of years? What is it to the soul that is measured in eternity? Incarnated how many times? Yet, man will simply fail if he has no vision and again be evolving as a tribal, social organism, just as you have seen for the last 10,000 years. Yes, yes, yes all over again. Vision. You must have vision. We leave you with blessings and with peace. Peace be with you.